the VOR accuracy has a limit of one degree. So what is the maximum cross track error at 200 uh, nautical miles? Okay, so this is a very, very simple basic question from the VOR. Uh, let's draw a small diagram. The track to draw diagrams, they always, they always recommend draw nice steady diagrams that can definitely help you even in the future when you turn back for your for the upcoming exams. Right? This is a common question asked for ATPL um, examinations where they give you a possible uh, error or accuracy of a VOR and they kind of ask you to find out the cross track error or a distance between beacons. So we'll see similar question as well again after this. So here I have a VOR station, the accuracy of which is given as one degrees plus or minus one degrees. Now what's the meaning of that? This means that if you take a radial, say for example 090 radial, so let me just draw that, radials are magnetic tracks moving out of a VOR. So this is a radial of 090 degrees. An accuracy limit of 1 degrees means when the VOR receiver shows you or indicates you a radial of 0, 9, 0, you could be anywhere between one degree less, which is kind of minus one degrees, which is going to take you on a radial of 0, 8, 9 degrees, or you could be on a radial that is one degree more than the selected or required radial which is 0, 9 or 1 degrees this is for plus 1 degrees of accuracy so this is the meaning of an accuracy limit of 1 degrees right so uh, and you're asked to find out the maximum cross track error at 200 nautical miles so let's navigate from the VOR to say 200 nautical miles which could be here you're asked to find out the cross track error which means say if you have gone out to your maximum limit, which means uh, you're supposed to be on 090 radial and you end up on 089 or 0901, what do you think is going to be the cross track error, which means what is going to be your distance off from the required uh, required track, the maximum you could possibly be to stay within the VOR accuracy limits. This is the uh, distance off from the required track, which you're asked to find out. Very, very simple question. Now, why I have put this question is because I'm going to try out this question with you uh, using two different methods. Uh, one by using the basic trigonometric method and the other by using your famous 1 in 60. Right? Let's find the answer using both the methods and see what we have here. Right? So let's look at the trigonometry first. And method number one will be using basic trigonometry to find out the uh, the cross track error. Uh, look at the triangle. Say, let me name the triangle as uh, O A B. Triangle O A B. And using method number one, trigonometry, you, you have the adjacent side, which is over here, which is three. Uh, correction, two hundred nautical miles, and the opposite side, the distance of which is required, which is given, the, uh, which is asked in the question, right? The trigonometric function connects, connecting the distance of and or the opposite side and the adjacent side is the is the tan function. Now, I am planning to make a short video on basic trigonometric functions. Do let me know if you need uh, further explanation on that, because if not in depth, you need at least the basics of trigonometry to kind of answer these kind of questions. So the trigonometric function we are looking at is tan theta and tan theta, just a basic idea, is opposite side divided by adjacent side all right now the opposite side over here is what is asked to find out which is the distance of divided by adjacent side is 200 nautical miles tan the theta is the accuracy limit which is one degree and that is equal to distance of divided by 200 nautical miles. So let's find out the distance of here. That's equal to 200 nautical miles multiplied with tan of 1 degree. Right. This is where your scientific calculator would be handy. Let's find out what 200 tan 1 is. And make sure when you use scientific calculator to find out trick based uh, uh, state mathematical statements, uh, your calculator is in, is in degree and not in the radian mode. This is also very, very important. Make sure there's a D, capital D, on the top tab of your uh, scientific calculator screen. Let's open it up. 
and let's make uh, you can just check it right away because that is quite important make sure it's it's an it's in degree format and then let's find what is 200 tan 1 degrees and that's 3.49 right uh, uh decimal 3.49 one zero. i'm just skipping the rest of it 3.49 because my answers have just one digit after decimal and so many nautical miles let me round this off let me look at the options it's like 3 2.5 2 and 3.5 it's more sensible to round this off to 3 decimal 5 nautical miles perfect that's it now very simple right if you know the basic trigonometric uh, function tan then using the right angle triangle in the diagram we can find out uh, the distance off track that is 3.5 nautical miles let me just mark it straight here 3.5 nautical miles this is using a trig um, method right now let me show you the very popular method uh, which we have which is method two and method two we are using the one in sixty rule right one in sixty so method one is using trigonometry where we use the tan function right and method two we'll be using one in sixty perfect now one thing which i mean i want you to specifically understand is one in sixty whatever said and done is extremely useful tool in the aircraft uh, and that is why it is designed for uh, it's not primarily designed for you to sit on a chair uh, with a notepad or with a paper and 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 a, and a pen and calculator and kind of calculate the error out and for that you have the basic mathematical equations including the trigonometric function use them Right? 1 in 60 is meant for you to be used in the aircraft, which makes it much more simpler. So in, if, if you haven't flown uh, so far, um, when you start flying, you understand. If you're already flying, you definitely are, you are with me. Uh, it's very simple cal calculations like subtraction, multiplication, division. That could be very, very smallest of the numbers. It could be becomes a pain uh, in the air. Uh, that is like that because of the amount of uh, ta tasks you have already in there. Uh, adding or subtracting very small numbers, particularly subtraction and division, uh, could be pretty difficult. So that is why they have devices 1 and 60. We don't have, necess have to necessarily apply tan function and find out using a calculator. You can just find out using your basic idea. For every 60 nautical miles, if you have z degrees of error, for every multiples of 60 nautical miles, the error is going to, the, the off track is going to uh, amount accordingly. And that is pretty much easier to find out. Uh, so, if not really mentioned in the question, it's more appropriate to use uh, the basic trigonometry to find out these right angle triangle based questions rather than 1 in 60. If 1 in 60 is required, they will either directly or indirectly tell you that you have to apply 1 in 60. Right? But let's find out what the answer would be uh, using 1 in 60. So, before we use 1 in 60, I want you to understand that 1 in 60 is basically an approximation and for the same reason if you have gone through a theory you will understand that 1 in 60 breaks off uh, above a track error of 20 degrees uh, so that's a, that's why it's kind of a more of an approximation to lower angles right and uh, let me see if I can kind of exemplify on why is that so uh, in one of the later videos if I get proper time all right so let's see 1 in 60 here and using 1 in 60 approximation we know that when you have a triangle right angle here uh, and this is considered as a distance off this is a required track for example this is the planned track and this is the track made good or the actual track made by, made by the aircraft you have a distance of, of of so many nautical miles and this will be your distance gone or distance to go depending upon the context. I'm not going into details of this. We have done 1 in 60 questions, quite a fair bit of it before, so you can just go and check out those videos as well. Right, so uh, applying 1 in 60, we know that the track error, which is the angle between the planned track and the track made good measured from the planned track, track error theta is equal to distance off divided by distance gone or to go depending upon uh, the context. It's closing angle, it's more like distance to go into into 60 right now 
the trichlor is what is given the question as your accuracy limit which is one degree distance off is what you need to find out divided by distance gone is 200 nautical miles multiplied with 60 and therefore distance off is equal to 200 divided by 60. So you can see there is no trigonometric function involved here and for that reason it could be easier uh, for you to calculate in the uh, aircraft your tracker and stuff. So basically 1 in 60 demands you or kind of expects you not to make a tracker of more than 20 degrees in the uh, aircraft. Probably you have to work on a navigation then rather than trying to find out your tracker. Alright, that's going to give you 3.33 nautical miles. Now see, I needed to now compare both the answers. Uh, the track or the distance off from 1 in 60 method is 3.33 nautical miles using 1 in 60. Now uh, look at both these answers. Uh, through trigonometric method we got 3.5 nautical miles and 1 in 60 we got 3.33 nautical miles. It's not that that uh, different right it's because the tracker is only one degrees here and since it is uh, it is one degrees you can apply 1 and 60 and therefore it's going to be a very very close approximation look at the options here you have two different options that might confuse you at this point 3 and 3.5 right so in in such cases when you have a clash between the two very very closely spaced options i would recommend you to always go with the trigonometry because that is more accurate unless it is mentioned in your question somewhere to use 1 and 60 directly or, or they give a hint of 1 and 60 as I told you 1 nautical mile is 6000 feet. Otherwise, if you have a clash of this sort, always go with um, the trigonometric function. You can always try uh, starting with 1 and 60 and if you do it in this question, you can see you'll end up three, getting 3 points in nautical miles. Look at the option, you can see, hey, it's like option A could be the answer, option D could be the answer. If you get such clashes, always try it out again using the basic trigonometry and and that should help and go with that particular answer now let's look at a different question here uh, all the way down i want you to uh, have a look at this question along with uh, the other question together now why is it uh, significant is that th this particular question we again we're going to try using both trigonometry and 1 and 60 and let's find out what's going to happen. This question is also a bit confusing with respect to the way it is framed. Uh, and it also also a rich question because it has additional information on airways which you probably have, have come across in your regulation uh, classes. Right? Question number 25. Let's see this.